Yeah. Hi guys, it's Stephanie with So Bank It. Welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining in uh, this video series. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the D-ring tabs and the exterior pocket with the magnetic snap closure. So now I'm just making the D-ring tabs. I am just taking a piece of scrap fabric and I'm going to fold the raw edge in and then fold it in half and stitch up each side. I am just going to press that crease in just to make it a little bit easier to sew. It also makes it just look nicer on the bag. So I'm just going to stitch up each side uh, with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to flip it around and sew down the other side. Now this is really too long. Uh, you only really need about an inch and a half to two inches for each D-ring tab. Um, I just had that scrap fabric and I'll trim it down in the end anyway, so that's just what I'm using. So the strips that I've sewn, I'm just going to cut them in half. And then I'll put the D-rings on. And then I'm just going to sew the ends together so that they don't split apart when I'm placing them in the bag. They're not going to uh, try to go every way. The sides will match up when I get them placed in the bag. So I'll just sew the end of each D-ring tab. And then I'll lay them to the side and... Uh, finish working on the exterior so everything can get put together. Now I'm ready to start working on the exterior pocket. I have two pieces of fabric for the pocket. They are 8 by 4 and I'll put interfacing on those. And then I have two pieces for the pocket flap. Now I've started out at 8 by three, and I'll put interfacing on one side of the pocket flap. So I have those same pieces for each bag. So I do have the pockets interfaced now, and I'm just gonna fold one piece of the exterior pocket in half, and I'm gonna mark the center. So now I'm just gonna pull out my magnetic snaps and uh, mark about an inch down on that center line. And then I'm going to line up my washer for my magnetic snaps and make a mark for the holes in the prongs. Again, I'm going to put the female port of the magnetic snap on the pocket and then the male part will be installed on the flap at a later time. So if I go an inch down, that's going to leave me room to sew and to top stitch without that snap getting in the way. I am putting a little extra piece of scrap interfacing on where the snap is going to be installed. Since we're poking a hole in that fabric, I just want some extra reinforcement. And now I'm just placing the center hole of that washer over the X and making the mark for the prongs. And then I'll cut the hole and get that snap installed. And I'm just going to use my seam ripper and just poke a little hole in there, cut it just a little bit, um, just until the prong will fit. And then I'll put the snap through and put that washer on. Sometimes it's easier to push it to the wrong side. Just to make sure you don't get the hole too large, kind of 
push it through and then take it out and put it on the right side. It's definitely not required, but it just makes it easier, or for me it's easier. And now I'll just put the washer on and bend the prongs back. And these prongs are rounded, so it's likely that they're never going to work through the other side of the pocket that we're going to sew together. Um, but I do like to either put a piece of interfacing or a piece of duct tape on the prongs just to reinforce them even further. If you choose to use uh, duct tape like I did here, um, just make sure that you keep it down out of your seam line because it will gum up your needle pretty quickly. And now before I put the pocket together, I am just going to press that area where um, I've worked with the fabric and it's a little wrinkled um, when I put the snap in. I'm just going to press that flat again and then start constructing the pocket. I actually decided to only interface one side of the pocket, um, so I am taking the other piece of 4 by 8 fabric and just lining it up with the piece that we've put the snap on and I'm going to sew around leaving an opening to turn. I'm leaving about a three inch opening uh, but I'll sew around with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I'll turn the pocket out. I am just going to pop a few clips in to make sure that the fabric doesn't shift while I'm sewing. I am leaving the opening to turn on the bottom and the top side is going to be the side with the magnetic snap. So I am going to start sewing at the bottom. I am back stitching at the beginning and the end. And again, I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance using the edge of my presser foot as a guide. When I come to the corner, I'm just going to put my needle down, lift the presser foot and turn and then just start sewing again. Same process for all four corners. I'm just going to do needle down, raise the presser foot, and turn. When I'm sewing across the top, I am going to be very careful to make sure that that snap doesn't hit the presser foot and kind of shift so that I ha have a crooked line. Um, Placing it down the inch should give you plenty of clearance if you decide to make this bag. Um, just depending on your foot, if you don't think you're going to have enough clearance there, you can definitely use a zipper foot or something different like that, um, a smaller presser foot to avoid that snap for this process. So now I have the pockets turned out and pressed and I completely missed the turning out of the pocket. Sorry about that, my battery died and I had no idea I was in the zone. Um, but that's the only thing really that you didn't see is me turning the pocket out. I'm just putting some clips um, at the bottom where, we, where I left the opening to turn and now I'm going to work on the pocket flap. 
for the pocket flap, I did go ahead and interface both pieces of fabric. And I want this flap to be curved, but I also want it to be symmetrical. So I'm just taking the fabric and I'm going to line it up across the top, right sides together, and I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to just cut the curve that I want. You can definitely leave it square if you want a square flap. It can be asymmetrical. Um, lots of different things that you can do with this flap, but I want mine to be symmetrical, so I am going to fold it in half, and I'm going to cut both sides at the same time. Since I have the curve that I want, I am just going to sew around the edge of the flap with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll do back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm leaving the top open. shears around the curve for a little bit to make sure that when I get the um, flap turned out that it's going to lay nice and flat. Once I get it trimmed, I will just uh, turn the flap right side out and I'll press it, get it ready to top stitch. And now I'm just going to top stitch using between an eighth and a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance around the pocket flap. So here I've already finger pressed the halfway point just so that I can find it. And I did mark two inches from the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to line the bottom of the pocket up with the line that I made that's two inches from the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to line the snap up with the center and then I'm going to pin the pocket into place. Once I have it pinned into place, I'm just going to sew around the three edges leaving the top of the pocket open. When I started sewing, I did back stitch a few times at the top of the pocket. I'm just going to come down to the corner, raise my presser foot, leave my needle down and turn and sew straight across. I am using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm, I've changed back to a 2.0 stitch length. I really wish I had gotten a better angle at this, um, but what I'm doing here is I'm laying the pocket flap down on the pocket and I'm just making a mark where I want that male part of the magnetic snap to go. And I'm just going to take the washer for the magnetic snap and I'm going to make a couple of little marks so I know where to poke the hole for the prongs. And then I'll use my seam ripper to make the holes where I'm going to insert the prongs for the magnetic snap. I did put another piece of scrap interfacing on this piece as well. Um, anytime I put a magnetic snap or a turn lock or anything like that in, I do reinforce it with a little extra interfacing. So now I have the male part of the magnetic snap. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the bag. And then I have that top open so I can work with it and just uh, put that washer on the back of the magnetic snap. And then I'll put a little piece of duct tape on this as well. 
Now I'm ready to attach the flap. I have the piece of binding that is eight and a half by two inches. I've folded it in a quarter of an inch on each end and pressed, and then I folded it in half and pressed. So it's gonna have be a nice straight piece of fabric. And I'm gonna attach that to the back of the flap. So the the side of the flap that has the snap on it. I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to make sure that the raw edge end is on the same side as the raw edge of the flap and the fold is away. So I'm sewing across the raw edges whenever I get it attached. So now I'm just going to sew down that edge with about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to backstitch beginning and end, still using about a 2.0 stitch length. And now I'm just going to flip that binding up and over and press it into place. And now I'm just going to clip the binding down. I have pressed it and I'm just going to clip it down and then I'm going to line the pocket flap up on the bag. Just going to use the magnetic snap, snap it into place and then I'm also just going to put a couple of pins to keep the pocket from shifting while I'm sewing. And I'll put those pins out of the way so I'm not going to have to worry about uh, removing them when I sew. Now I'm just going to sew across the top and around the binding. Um, I do backstitch at the beginning and end, and I will, on each end of the binding, I will backstitch a couple of times just to make sure that I secure that pocket flap into place. Now I'll remove the pins and the front panel of the bag is done. 
Uh, the next video I'm just going to show you how I put everything together. Hope you're enjoying the series. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.